We're getting hit by some pockets of fast solar wind from some coronal holes that are rotating through the Earth's strike zone, and it could bring us more aurora. And did you feel that? That was an earthquake. No, wait, that wasn't here. It was on Mars. Those stories are more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely picking up. We have a massive remnant coronal hole region that's going to be rotating through the Earth's strike zone. Now, this region's actually comprised of several smaller coronal holes, and so that means that we're going to be getting some sporadic fast wind and kind of like pockets, so it's going to be more like pss, 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 and fits and starts. Now, this unfortunately means that we won't likely bump up to storm levels. We could see some decent aurora at high latitudes, but if it makes mid latitudes, well, it's just going to be a skosh here and there. But it could easily happen over the next few days, so your aurora photographers definitely stay on your toes. Now, unfortunately, we also have a very spotless sun right now, so the radio propagation is once again tanked. We're back into the low or the high 60s for solar flux. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're just gonna have to deal with it. At least we do know that the massive region 2738 is still alive and kicking. It actually shut off a solar storm on the sun's backside, and we could start seeing that rotate back into stereo's view here in the next couple days. Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see we continue to be extremely low when it comes to the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy our solar flux is also low. Now back on the 14th, you really see that X-ray flux begin to dive. This was when region 2738 rotated to the sun's backside and it continued to stay really low. We dropped back down into the high 60s for uh, solar flux levels, which means poor radio propagation for amateur radio shortwave and emergency responders. Now on the 18th, you do see kind of a weird little jump up in one of the channels there. Don't worry about that. That is just simply a data recalibration. They do this periodically to make sure the different satellites are in calibration. So nothing funny happened on the sun there. Unfortunately, we're still at low radio propagation. And this is easily going to continue over the next week, possibly even 10 days before we see a bit of a reprieve. Switching to your solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past 10 days or so, we've really been hitting only about unsettled conditions, even though we've been hit by pockets of fast solar wind over and over again. And the reason for this is that the fast solar wind isn't nearly as strong and it doesn't last nearly as long because the coronal holes driving it are getting smaller and smaller as we continue moving through this solar minimum sun. And unfortunately, the pockets of fast solar wind we're going to get hit by, we're already beginning to see the effects and it's only bumped us back up to unsettled conditions once again. So likely we're not going to reach storm levels from this set of pockets of fast solar wind and we're just going to be kind of bouncing around between quiet and unsettled conditions easily over the next few days. Switching to our moon, we are now moving through the third quarter moon phase, and by the 28th, the moon will still be about 40% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you need to check your local rise and set times. And now for your Martian Minute. It saw 143 on the red planet, and today the high is a minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit cooler than normal for this time of year. Now the low is a minus 144 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about average for this time of year, and the winds are out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. But that's not the big story. The big story is that JPL confirmed just today that the InSight lander did indeed record a Martian quake on April 6th using the very broadband sensors on the SICE instrument. This is the seismic experiment for internal structure. Now here is the actual quake pitched up about 60 times so that it goes into the audible range. Listen. Now the InSight team is super excited about the confirmation of these observations because this is the first time a seismometer has actually been on the surface of Mars. For all previous missions, the seismometer always was on the lander, so they never got as good of readings. And what this information can bring us is not only insight into the core of Mars, but it also will give us insight into the core of Earth in the not too distant future. That's one small step for Mars and one giant leap for Martian seismology.
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun from the side anymore. Now, when you first look at this, you can actually see at right on the 21st, there's a huge solar storm that has launched. You watch it right here. Blammo! Did you see that thing being shot out there? That was being shot by region 2739, which isn't even in stereo's view yet. So at least we know that region is still very active. Now on top of that, you also see a finger-like coronal hole. That's that dark region there. That is going to be rotating back into Earth view here in the next couple days, and it could bring us maybe even active conditions uh, in about two weeks or so. So we're keeping an eye on that. There's also a little bit of a bright region you can see that might give a tiny boost to the solar flux, but not probably not too much. Outside of that, the sun is completely spotless. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders are going to have to continue dealing with this poor radio propagation easily for the next week. But we are beginning to see the fingers of region 2739 in stereo's view, and it should come back into view in the next few days. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from some more fast solar wind from these shrinking coronal holes that are rotating through the Earth's strike zone. Now at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm, but don't expect these types of conditions to last. Literally over the next day or so, things will diminish quite rapidly. Now at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 35% chance of active conditions. But again, don't expect these conditions to last very long at all. So aurora may be very fleeting, especially at mid-latitudes. And then as we move in through the weekend, things should pretty much go back to being quiet. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we have a spotless sun yet again, and so everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. We have absolutely no risk for big flares or radio blackouts right now. And GPS users, you should be extremely happy. The solar flux is sitting in the high 60s again, so it's very low, and that means your GPS reception should be great on Earth's day side even at low latitudes. Now, amateur radio and shortwave radio responders, while well, you guys aren't quite so happy with the low 60s, this means poor radio propagation once again on Earth's day side for you, and it will continue to be so easily over this next week and possibly two weeks before we get a reprieve. Now, also because we do have our solar minimum sun, we are getting more cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We have a remnant coronal hole region that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and it could be sending us some fits and starts of some fast solar wind, but don't expect the fast solar wind to last all that long. So your aurora photographers, whoa, you're really going to have to stay on your toes because aurora could be very fleeting. Now, as far as you amateur radio and shortwave radio responders go, well, we have a spotless sun this week, so that doesn't look too good for us. However, these really weak uh, solar storms oftentimes can give us a little bit of a boost on radio propagation, on, even on Earth's day side. And night side should be a little bit better than normal simply because we have that disturbed solar wind that's going to be helping us along. So until region 2739 rotates back into Earth view, which could easily be about another two weeks or so, hopefully this will give you a little bit of a reprieve and kind of alleviate some of the pain of poor radio propagation. Now, at least on the good side, the GPS users, well, you guys love low solar flux, so your GPS reception on Earth's day side should look fantastic, even at low latitudes. So enjoy for the time being, and as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora, if you find it, you should have no problem with reception. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thanks for watching.